In this video, we will take a look at the Beam Reinforcement Tool. It is located here in E1 in Pro Concrete Tasks. Once you select it, you have different tabs here in this window, which you have to define to create the reinforcement properly. So let's take a look at this beam. First of all, I'm going to select that one with this middle button. Right now, I'm working with reinforcement for that beam. Next, we will jump to the second tab, which is called Beam Defaults. And here we can define our covers. So let's say 25 millimeter here, 25 here, 25 here, and bottom is 25 too. Okay, so we have our basic set of covers set up. Now let's go to Longitude Reinforcement. And here we have to define first placeholders for our reinforcement, so where the reinforcement can be placed. And then in the second box, we will define what type of reinforcement we will put in those placeholders. Let's start with this first. Right here, we have to define zone A, and it's going to be a bottom zone. And I want to have four bars in the bottom zone. As you can see, immediately I have those four placeholders at my disposal. Okay, I can define the additional clearance or start and end offset for my reinforcement. To see how it works, let's create a bar and place it into that placeholder. Here, I just press a plus button and my label is going to be 1. The location is going to be continuous. I can go left or right and that defines how we put the reinforcement inside and how left and right offset works. And here I have to define the size, let's do 20 millimeters, and let's put them one by one into the beam. You can see I'm already modeling those here in my model. So now I have four bars. If I create an offset, let's say I have a one meter offset from left, you will see that this is the bars are sticking out one meter to the left. If I use a negative value, right now, I, those will be in. And the same goes for for uh, right side. So let's do minus one meter on the right two. So this is where we have location set to continuous. If I use left, that means left offset and right offset are now measured here from the left side. If I use, if I use right, it's the same, but on this side. So let's do like four meters here. And here's how we define the bar. So one meter from right and four meters in. That's how it works. All right, so I want to have a continuous reinforcement and, and my offsets are gonna be minus 50 from both sides. Okay, so we have the first zone and first bar set up. Now let's do other zones. I want to have a second zone, which is going to be called B and top. And I want to have two bars at the top. And again, the placeholders are there. And let's put bar 16 there. I'm going to call it 2, 16, and I'm going to place it there. So now I have two additional. So if your code requires to have bars on those faces too, you can do that. Let's create a third zone, which is called C. And now I'm going to use location left. So right now I'm defining what bars are on the left side of that beam. And here I can define quantity one. And that's going to be one bar at the top. If I go two, there's going to be two bars here and here. And the one that's interesting for me, it's three. So now I have a middle bar here. And into that middle bar, I can put a third bar I'm going to define here, and that's going to be continuous, and it's going to be 10 millimeter bar, just a construction bar here. And I can create a fourth zone for right side. I'm going to call it D, and I'm going to use the same three, and I'm going to put number three here. So it's really simple and easy just to find the zone and put the right bars into that zone. Of course, those zones can have additional clearances 
start and end offsets, but also they have, can have end conditions. So let's say I want to have those top bars bent. So I'm going to go to my bar number two, and which it, this is the bar that's being placed here on the top. And I'm going to use end condition bend. And you can see these are being bent. And the same for the others. If you want to modify that end condition, you can do that too. If you go inside of that using those three dots menu, you can now override some of the settings like pin diameter or length. That's number three. Or if you want to access number nine, you have to click on this override tail. And now I can input, like, let's say I have, want to have 500 millimeters extension of that bar. And that's what's going to happen here on this. So everything is editable, you can change it, you can adjust it. So now let's go to stirrups, and this is very similar to the column tool. First I have to define the zones, and my zone number one is going to be bar 8, start from 30 to 1 meter, and with spacing 100, and I'm going to create a stirrup here. So first I created a zone, now I am creating the geometry of the stirrup is going to have a label S one and here i'm just clicking through on which bars i want to bend my stirrup so i'm going to start here go there and you can see it's being placed go down go right and go up here as with all the bars you can set up end conditions so i will create a hook 90 degree hook on both ends and that's just the first zone so if i want to have more zones i want to fill out all this beam with stirrups, now I have to create additional zones. My zone number two is going to be again eight, and spacing is going to be 200, and it's going to start from 101.2 meters in, and that zone is going to be a middle zone, and it's going to end on one and 0.2 meters too. So, right now, middle zone, as you notice, probably is calculated differently than the start zone. So first one was the start zone and it starts 30 millimeters from the start of the beam and it ends one meter inside of the beam. Middle zone, on the other hand, the start is being measured from the start of the beam and the end is being measured from the end of the beam. That's how we can keep the relative length of that zone related to the total length of the beam. That means if I extend my beam this still will be measured from that end and i will have my middle zone filled okay so let's do the, the last one which is going to be the end zone again the same size that's number three and spacing is going to be 100 again and i'm going to start from 30 and finish at 1.2 meters so i have my beam filled up with stirrups okay now we also have a lap options at our disposal and here it works as I can set up where those bars should overlap and I can decide the lap method. So here it is by bar diameter and I can say regardless of the bar size, I want to have 40 diameters of overlap for my bars. And if I click automatic lap, it should create an lap for the bar if those are long enough. So let's extend the beam and so we have the overlap automatically generated based on the stock length of the bar and here I can decide for the bars it's going to be my length of my overlap. Here you can see I can se select which bars I want to define the lap for. So I can have a different overlap for the bars depending on which layer rebar location I'm overlapping. And this is typical because you will put bar overlap in different location depending if it's on the top of the beam or the bottom of the beam so i can do that right now so i wouldn't put lap for the bars in the middle of the beam when they are on the bottom 
So here what I can do, I can say, I want to use uniform length. And this way, I have two overlaps. One is here in this section of the beam, and the second one is here. If I want to use automatic overlap. But also, I can use manual overlap. And here I can decide exactly where I want to have my overlap. So let's say I want to have it one quarter from the start. And exactly in this place, the overlap will be placed. I can override that and add additional values for length. And also I have different options here, like 1.5 of height of the beam from the start, from the end, quarter from start and end, and offsets from start and, and end of column edge. So these are my overlap possibilities. As we have, I think I'm, I'm stressing that in assignment, it's really important to assign a proper layer for the, your reinforcement, proper level. And please watch other videos when I describe best practices for re concrete and rebar modeling and how important those appropriate layers are. Finally, uh, we can clone our reinforcement and you will see that this reinforcement will adapt to this other beam I have created here, even if it has different dimensions. I will use my clone tool and here I will select this beam and you'll see this overlap still stayed there. It's quarter length of the beam from the start. The stirrups and the zones I have here too, so it's all parametric and relative to dimensions of the beam. And last thing I want to mention is that we can use templates. And it's the same as it was for concrete modeling. So I can set up all those settings in every tab here and then click on this template button, create a new folder, means create a new template, call it beam1, or you can be more descriptive if you want to say what type of bars it's using or describe the zones in some kind of way. So you will know what it is, add it to favorites, and now this setting will be available here, so you can really easily get back to it anytime you want. So you can define a new beam, reinforce it however you want, and then go to properties of that reinforcement. And if you need to, you can quickly jump between different settings for beams.